Last week, we got the chance to test out a couple of Sigma lenses. And while we did that, the light was just, ooh, it was so nice. There was just enough mist, just enough sun kind of coming through the mist. So we're gonna dive into Lyrum. We're gonna edit one of those photos. It was taken on the 60 to 600. It's a nice wildlife photo. We're gonna edit that together. We're gonna look at some interesting techniques you can use in Lightroom. We're gonna use different kind of maskings, all kind of stuff, all kind of stuff. We're gonna have a good time. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, we're diving into Lyrum. We're looking at this photo I took on the Sigma 60 to 600 with the Sony A7R5. We're going to edit it together. We're going to have a good time. There's going to be all kinds of interesting things that we do to it. So let's dive in. This is the photo. Now, straight out of camera, I'm pretty happy with this, to be honest with you. It was kind of just a nice moment. I think this is a a Canadian goose? I don't really know that much about birds, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's what it is. If it's not, let me know. In the, or if it is, I'd love to know. Either way, if you know, just let me know in the comments. But the light was particularly nice. Now, something that's interesting before we even get into editing is all about how you can use telephoto lenses to really control that background. We've talked about this in previous Tutorial Tuesdays, and this is a prime example of this. This was a lake that was called the Lagoon. It was a very nice area. There were some interesting trees around there. Like I say, the light was particularly interesting. You can see it's quite misty, but there's sort of rays of light coming through, which is really nice. If I'm honest with you, the surrounding area was hit and miss. Some of the background was nice, some of it not so much. Just out of frame in this photo, there's actually a discarded scooter in the water, but it doesn't matter because, I mean, it does matter, but it doesn't matter in the terms of the photo because, you know, it's out of frame, right? And because it's a long lens, this was shot at what? 97.4 uh, mil. So actually I'm not zooming in too much with this one, but I'm zooming in enough to be able to control what's in the background. And that's an important thing to start with. Before we even go any further, you know, it's important to control that background, control what's in the frame, because that's gonna give you the best possible starting point. Now I have slightly messed up this photo, but only in the slightest of ways, in the sense that I would like the goose or bird to be centered in the photo. Now that means that the first thing we're gonna do before we do anything else, we're gonna go ahead and crop this slightly. So let's go ahead to the crop tool here. Let's just crop this slightly, just like this. Nothing too major, but we just wanna bring our bird friend here right into the center of the photo like that. I'm gonna bring it along the bottom line in terms of the rule of thirds so that we've got a nice bit of space above. In fact, you know what, I might even, I might even do that. Just because really I don't need this foreground area as much and the actual upper part of this photo is much more interesting with the mist and the, the rays of light and stuff like that. Next up, we're gonna do some slight adjustments just to the overall photo so we can go ahead and maybe bump the contrast up a little bit. Let's bring those highlights down a touch and the shadows up just a little bit. We're gonna come down to the hue, saturation and luminance tab where I'm gonna bring these oranges down a little bit, the yellows down. I'm gonna leave everything else as is. I just like the look of it, so I don't wanna mess around too much with it. I am gonna bring in a little bit of a vignette, but otherwise I'm gonna bring this calibration and bring the red primary over to the oranges a little bit, the blue primary over to the teal. That's a good starting point for me. I think that that feels that feels good. We can look at the before and after at any time by pressing the backslash key on the keyboards. This was before and this is after. Very minimal adjustments to be honest. Just a little bit of vignetting, a little bit of contrast, nothing too major. The next thing I might go and do in this situation is actually come up to the temperature up here and just drop that a little bit towards the cooler side. I just feel like it's a cooler image and you know, it's winter. This is probably the way I wanna go with it. I'm also gonna come up here to this part here, the profile browser. I'm gonna click on that and you get a bunch of different options here for how you might want to affect the image. And if you mouse over them, you can see what it's going to do. Now, what I like about this is a little bit like adding a preset, but we can then adjust the amount, which of course you can do with a preset as well. Now there's a few different options for the type of profile you might want to apply. I like to use the modern ones. I'm just gonna have a look at these. Let's mouse over them for a second. You see, they, they, they give you an idea of a style for your photo. You know, I like something like that, for example. I like something like that, and I also like something like this. This is a little bit more contrasty, but uh, I don't know, maybe this is the one. I'm gonna go for this one for now. Now, I'm gonna reduce the amount down a little bit, and we can always come back and change that later, but it gives us an interesting look to our photo straight away. So I'm pretty happy with 
The overall look of the photo so far, where we've done a global edit, so we've affected the entire photo in different ways. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do some masking because this is where things start to get really interesting. So we can come up here to the masking actual sort of tab. It opens this up. The first one I'm gonna do is click subject here, which is going to let Lightroom select our subject, which is done there. It's even selected the reflection, which is quite handy in this situation. And I'm just gonna bring the exposure up, not too much. We actually don't want our subject to be crazy bright in the image because even though normally I would look to make our subject the brightest part of the image, actually there's almost a little bit of a silhouette thing going on here. Now next up, we're gonna go create new mask. We're gonna go linear gradient. I'm gonna bring in some darkness from the bottom here. Right, so I'm just gonna bring this linear gradient in like that and bring that exposure down. We just don't need this brighter foreground, right? It's all about our goose friend and then the mist and the sunlight and all that kind of stuff. Next up, we're gonna go create new mask. We're gonna go linear gradient again. This time, I'm gonna bring it in much further. I'm gonna do something like this. Now, this is gonna cover most of the water here, but what we're gonna do is actually go, we're gonna go right click on this mask and we're gonna go intersect mask with select subject. And that's gonna apply that mask we just drew in, but only on our subject. And if I untick this invert box, you can see now it's affecting everything that I just drew that over except for our subject, which to be honest, is a really powerful tool. There's so much you can do with that. We've done a few tutorials about that already. We've kind of included it in a few different ones, but that is a really powerful way to edit. And I, I, as soon as I started using it, I use it in so many photos now because it's such an interesting thing to actually use. Now with this one, I'm gonna bring the exposure down again. This time, of course, we're not just affecting this foreground, we're affecting past our subject. I'm also gonna bring the temperature towards the cooler side. So we're actually really kind of bringing some blue tones into this water. If I turn that mask off and back on, I quite like the look of that. Now you might think to yourself, actually I quite like the uh, kind of more monochromatic. It's a little bit more desaturated look. Maybe you much prefer that. Maybe you prefer this, this lighter water behind. That's fine, that's fine. We can all do all kinds of different things. That's the fun of it, right? Is that different people like different things and I don't know that there's a wrong answer. So this is fun. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and add another mask in here. We're gonna go linear gradient again. We're gonna use a good few of those. I'm gonna bring this down from the top this time. Now this one, I'm actually gonna bring in some warmer tones possibly. Do you know what? That didn't look that good. So I'm not gonna do that. But I am gonna bring down the dehaze a little bit. Now that a negative dehaze almost creates a, a sort of misty effect, which I think looks quite good. You need to be careful not to overdo it. If I turn this mask off and back on, I think that looks pretty good. We could even bring the exposure up a little bit maybe, but we don't wanna to go too crazy with it. But I think that I think that looks pretty good. Now, if we were to look at the before and after, so before and after, we've done quite a lot there. That was how it was out of camera, which is still quite nice. And that's how we've got it so far. Now, something that I might do now is go back into global editing, so affecting the entire photo, and we're gonna come down to the color grading tab. Now I'm not gonna do that much in terms of the color grading. We could experiment with a little bit of orange, maybe in the midtones. I actually quite like that. A little bit of blue maybe in the uh, in the shadows there. Maybe even pop some orange in the highlights, see what that looks like. I actually don't mind that at all. Let's turn that off and back on. It's reasonably subtle actually. We could even possibly up that a little bit. I actually, I actually really like that. Now that I've done that, I didn't intend for that, but I really like it. But we can come in here and actually isolate specifically the midtones. And we've done a video all about this, but let's bring that luminance down a little bit, specifically in the midtones. And you'll see we're starting to get a little bit more detail in the background here. We're starting to get a little bit more of the trees coming through the mist, which I quite like. So we've got that misty feel, but we still have a little bit of detail in what is back there. Now, I'm actually really happy with how we've kind of edited this photo now. I, I like the look of this. If we look at the before and then the after, I like the style. I like the kind of coloring we've done here. I like it, I'm a big fan of it. But, you know, there's a few things we could do. Now it becomes very subjective as to what we want the end result to look like. We could brighten our subject a little bit more here. We could add some more mist or, or some more light rays coming down. You could also, you know, if you wanted to experiment with the style of the photo, this is something I like to do actually. You could come over to the presets over on the left. Now, admittedly, they're a bit intense, but this is a good place to kind of 
try and find an interesting look to your photo if you do want to stylize it a little bit. Now, these ones are the seasons presets. So for example, in the summer presets here, I think that one looks really nice. For example, we could click that one. We could bring the amount down, you know, if we think it's a bit much. And then look at this, before and after. So that's before, that's after. I actually think that looks really nice. We could come down. I'm a big fan of these cinematic ones. You know, I think they... They have a certain place. I like this one as an example. Let's click that one. I think that one looks really good. Let's bring the amount down a little bit. Let's look at the before and after. I'm really happy with this photo. We can always come back into some of these masks. Let's go back to the uh, the subject here. Let's just bring that exposure up a little bit. Let's bring the shadows up a little bit just to make sure we can we get a good good amount of visibility and detail on our subject. Otherwise. I think this is looking really good. Now, it might be that you would have stopped earlier than this. Maybe I would have done. Maybe I actually would have done as well. But I'd be really interested to hear what your thoughts are because it's so interesting getting people's ideas and thoughts about editing purely because it's such a subjective thing. You know, you can color correct things to be correct in terms of white balance and stuff like that. But then it really comes down to how far do you want to push it? How much do you want to color it? How much do you want to stay true to how it came out of camera? And how much do you want to stylize your photo? So I'd love to hear your thoughts, what you would have done differently, what you would have kept in. Let me know down in the comments. It's a very interesting kind of process to talk about that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Of course, you can check out the lens and the camera that we used by checking out the links down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new content all the time. I'll be seeing you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.